So now we have the uh, phase canonical form in our back pocket. We can always change to phase canonical form if we want. We'll just whip up a controllability matrix. And we're off to the races. We're good to go. All right. If you have to sum it up in like 10 words, what is phase canonical form? It doesn't have to be 10 words. Just yeah, just like it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just a form. Uh, it's, a, it's a... You did like three times. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to restart. I'm trying to restart it to be a little bit better. It, it, phase canonical form is a way of writing the uh, state space model that gives us uh, that, that gives us that gives us nice properties for, for solving for the gains. Um, it's uh, the, we can always transform our state space model basis, right? The basis vector. We can always do that. We did it before when we wanted to do that modal decomposition stuff. We found the eigenvalue matrix and the eigenvector matrix, and we diagonalized our system. We did that. It was the same sort of transformation, but it was a different transformation matrix. It got us to a different form. This form is convenient for finding these controller gains, and that's why we're going to do it. Um, it's not. It's not uh, uh, sort of magic. It's just useful, just for this reason, and that's it. Um, so we just use it. We we like. We've become very nimble over the last two years because we've learned how to do a bunch of different model representations, right? All these different state-space model representations. And within that, you know, you can diagonalize, you can transform your basis anytime you want. You can do transfer functions. Um, you can do uh, frequency response functions. Like you've got all of these different model representations. And, Depending on the situation in control theory, uh, one might be better than another. So in this case, it's phase variable canonical form, which hasn't been useful to us up until this point. I will, however, I'll, I'll mention this since we're like on this little sidebar about it. Something... Uh, that you guys haven't experienced that a lot of folks who learn how to make a state model have experienced is is uh, constructing a state space realization they're called and that's when you go from an input output ordinary differential equation like an nth order one to a state space model we've gone the other way we've gone from state space to an input output differential equation the reason I didn't teach you that is that we haven't had a lot of need for it in our work because the way that we do our modeling gives us the state space model directly. And so we haven't had to do a state space realization because it comes for free. Um, do we you haven't need it for solving using ODE 45 and we want to do solve for higher order. Yeah, so if you if you want to use ODE 45 and you have a second, third, fourth order ODE, something higher than one, uh, you need to decompose that into a set of first order ODEs, which is essentially putting it into state space form. And there are several ways of doing that. One of the ways of doing that puts it into phase variable canonical form. It's probably the most common way of doing it, is, to put, is putting it in phase variable canonical form. Um, and it's, yeah, so I, I, I encourage you to look it up, and it is in your textbook, I believe, in the system dynamics textbook, I believe. Uh, it's definitely in the NIST textbook, if it's not. Um, so I think, I don't know. Anyways, it's on the internet, I know that. Um, but it's state space realizations are useful, and and so folks who have gone through it that way, constructing state space from the the second or third order ODE, they're they've already seen it. They've already seen this form before. It's a very familiar form. We are always going to have to transform into that form because that's not the way we start. 
our state-based models are better than theirs will ever be because uh, when they do their state-based realization, they don't get to choose their state vector very well. I and mean, their state variables are pretty much, um, uh, uh, they depend on what the realization form is. And the realization form, like phase variable canonical form, which is the typical one, it's just a bunch of derivatives of one of the terms. So like, you might end up with like the fourth or fifth derivative of the position would be a state variable, which isn't super enlightening. Um, you could plot it, but it might look really weird, and you wouldn't have any physical intuition for it. The way that we construct state models, it's always a... Um, an energy storage variable. Um, so it's either going to be like a current through an inductor, or it's going to be a velocity of a mass, or something like that. Something that is intuitive and that physically makes some makes some sense, I guess. So that's why that's part of why we have always gone from this perspective of state uh, state space modeling from the get go, and not state space modeling as like an afterthought. Uh, because I think that the state-based models that you get are much more uh, informative and more powerful and just more better. So. All right. So now we have a phase variable canonical form, which you know is now just one more tool in our tool belt. We can convert over to phase variable canonical form if we want to, and it turns out in this case we will want to. So let's use that. So solving for the gain via the phase variable canonical form. So the phase variable canonical form of the original system is given in equation 9.8. Where, as usual, our, so whenever we have a phase variable canonical form, our A matrix looks like this, our B matrix looks like this, our C matrix looks like this, and our D matrix looks like that. So uh, we need uh, so the, uh, AIs are defined by the original characteristic polynomial, which is determinant of SI minus A. Because we said the the determinant um, the characteristic polynomial is is. Uh, uh, Invariant, right? It doesn't vary depending on the, the basis you're in. So we have that characteristic polynomial, and so therefore we have all of the coefficients that go into our A matrix. So our, our A matrix, our phase variable canonical form, our A matrix is done. Bam! Right away. Easy to find. Uh, the form of the feedback state model uh, with feedback row vector kc is ac prime so this is so the prime denotes the fact that we have done feedback now right so ac means in this phase variable canonical form so in canonical form the prime means that now we have a new feedback feedback in the new in the a matrix so now our new a matrix is a C minus B C K. Okay. Um, our prime B matrix is just the uh, the phase variable canonical B matrix. Now th this is hearkening back to here. A minus B K, C minus D K, etc. So this is we're going back there. Uh, we're just using that formula. A C prime deserves further attention. The special canonical form of AC and BC makes the expression for AC prime simply this. So if you compute this, notice that AC, most of AC, uh, is, is just zeros and ones, right? All these are just zeros and ones. And they're multiplying all of this stuff up here, which all these Bs are zero. So as all uh, pretty much irrelevant what's happening up there except for there's one one each row all the way down to the very end and at the very end we have a row that has a k value 
and one of these a values, one of these coefficients, where k i prime is the row vector of gains in the phase variable canonical basis. Okay. The design characteristic polynomial coefficients delta i must be equal to the characteristic polynomial coefficients. So we know delta i, which is stuff that you know, we, we specify delta i. Those are things, those are knowns. That has to be equal to each of these values, which means that we can solve really easily in each equation. They're all decoupled, right? If you don't put it in this form, you're going to end up with this massive uh, system to untangle of these coefficients. The way that you do it in phase, canonical, phase variable canonical form it ends up just being this simple subtraction to solve for each variable, which is really nice. So, conveniently, each ki uh, prime is equal to delta i minus 1 minus ai minus 1. So that is the, that is the formula for all of the, the gains um, uh, in the primed variable. This yields k prime. If we equate the feedback, then we know that kx has to equal k prime xc. So those are the those are both of the feedbacks. We know that has to be the same. And therefore you can solve for k, which is to say that k is just equal to k prime tc. Okay. Now let U and UC be the controllability matrices for the original basis and the phase variable canonical basis, respectively. From section, the one that we did on the, the, uh, <clears throat> the controllability, uh, we can compute the transformation matrix to be UC, U inverse. So we now have everything that we need. And we could do the design, but we're going to have a little, before we do the example, uh, we're going to talk about steady state error for a second. Uh, and we're going to take a break before we do the example. And that's, and that's, and that's what we're going to do. All right. Steady state error. We can use the gain n, which is on the command signal coming in, to drive the closed loop steady state error to zero for step inputs. Okay. The idea is that we can scale the input by the reciprocal of the closed loop steady state error. Let GCL of S be the closed loop transfer function, um, <clears throat> closed loop transfer function. Uh, from the final value theorem for a unit step input, n is equal to the limit, so We are essentially inverting this transfer function, and we are uh, setting n. Um, we are taking the limit as s goes to zero of this, and uh, I don't know why it says limit as n goes to one. Definitely limit as s goes to zero. I don't know why it says limit as n goes to one. That's confusing to me. But anyways, if n is non-zero and finite, the response will have uh, zero steady state error. Okay? So, that's ideal. That's what we would like. Um, although it is derived from unit step inputs, we can apply this formula to slowly varying inputs as well. So, it's not, it's not like, uh, if it has zero steady state error, it doesn't mean, for a step input, it doesn't mean it's going to have something, um, uh, wildly bad for other inputs. Um, it's just that step inputs are exactly true. The error is. So, state feedback, poll placement design is going to be what we'll do when we come back from a little break. <laughs>